Shalom. First and foremost, we'd like to start off by giving all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders, bishops, and teachers of GMS, better known as Great Millstone, who taught me this 144% truth. Also, who rule well. And peace and salutations unto the hopeful elect. And this is your brother, Matizat Bath, back again with another quick hit lesson. Going into um, not going back and forth with brothers and striving with uh, foolish and unlearned questions because eventually you're going to end up in a position where you're going to fall off. And with you being an example to the sincere believers out there, it's very important that we must establish in these you know, last final days to show ourselves not only to be men, all right, but, you know, in defending the gospel, we must walk accordingly as our big brother, Yahweh Shai, was the main example of that. And uh, first and foremost, starting with myself, all right, I see too many brothers that, you know, it's good that you have a zeal in defending the gospel, but you have to be very careful and circumspect, all right, so that we don't show off to others of being violent and, you know, um, working the, the 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 word of the Lord deceitfully because of our own vain opinion, you know, filthy lucrece and anything that goes against sound doctrine. So I wanted to dive into this uh lesson, uh short and quick, straight to the point. Um and Yahweh Ratas our Lord willing this will be edifying. So this is Second Timothy chapter two. <clears throat> We're gonna start at verse fourteen. And it says, of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. OK, so you don't want to sit there. All right. And going back and forth in arguments that are pretty much useless. All right. Because as I always say time and time again, no edification comes out of that. OK, we can sit here and go back and forth all day long. But if you're just going to continue to, uh, you know, stay around a concept of you don't get this and you don't get that because you're not open minded. OK, you're closed, you know, minded, as the scripture says, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. OK, there's no re there's no real reason for us to go back and forth with you. Right. <clears throat> Drop down to verse 16. It says, but shown profane and vain babblings for they will increase unto more ungodliness, right? To shun meaning to avoid, okay? Don't sit there and go back and forth with an individual, okay, with talks or conversations that are that end up being completely worthless because eventually that person who you're dealing with, you're going to fall off and you're going to get sucked in, all right, to their uh, argument. And then you're going to be brought down to their estate and it's not worth it, Right? <clears throat> Verse 17, it says, and their word will eat as a doth a canker of whom is uh, Hymenaeus and uh, Philetus, right? Because these two men, all right, they were set up. They were Paul's um, adversaries against the gospel, okay? And they are great examples of what not to be, okay? Verse 18, it says, who concerning the truth hath erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. All right. Just like you have certain Israelites today that talk about, you know, Yahweh Shai never walked the planet Earth. He never came in the flesh. Or you have people that say John the Baptist wasn't in the truth. You know, all of these things that go against sound doctrine. OK, it's very important that you don't get into um, a battle going back and forth. All right. Especially if they already have their conscious seer believing in what they believe in. All right. Let's see here. Um, yeah, let's drop down to uh, verse 23. It says, but foolish and unlearned questions. All right. Avoid knowing that they do gender strifes. OK. And they will gender strifes. And I've, I've witnessed it firsthand. It's really no point of going back and forth with someone if they don't get it. OK, if they're not sincere to receive the, the true sound doctrine, leave them alone. Let them be. OK, obviously, they're not meant to get it. OK, um, I remember when I first came on TikTok, you know, I had a, a obsession of going back and forth with people on a comment board. And I actually stopped doing that because 
you know, their conscience is already seared in what they believe in, no matter how many precepts, no matter how many uh, breakdowns uh, you sending them links to, to try to help their understanding. If they keep bickering, going back and forth with you, leave those people alone. It's obviously it's not meant for them to get it right. Verse 24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive. Right. Let's look at that word strive. What does it mean to not strive? Strong's G, 3164, Machamai, Machamai. So it means to fight of armed combatants or those who engage in a hand-to-hand -hand struggle, of those who engage in a war of, uh, war of uh, words, to quarrel, wrangle, dispute, of those who contend at law for property and privileges, all right? So we need to be very circumspect on how we treat one another and how we go about uh, doing the will of the Heavenly Father and through his son, Yahweh Shai, because Yahweh Shai didn't get uh, into scuffles and arguments and fist fights back and forth uh, when he was coming up against the Pharisees and Sadducees. So, you know, Yahweh Shai, big brother, you know, is the greatest example on how to walk in this truth. OK, you say what needs to be said. You use circumspect. You use wisdom. OK, on where you can apply wisdom. All right. And you and that's the end of it. You be done and over with. All right. But our main focus is supposed to stay on this truth and to make sure that the sincere hearers out there and believers. All right. Subscribe to the true sound doctrine of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's what it's really about. All right. So read that again. Verse 24 says, and the servant of the Lord must not strive. All right. So don't fight, but be gentle unto all men apt to teach and patient. OK, now, yes, sometimes whether you out there on the highways and byways, you know, or you're doing a live or whatever the case may be. OK, sometimes you might get in a situation to where you can't help if a person comes around. All right. But you have to use uh, circumspect and be diligent on how you move and some of the things that you say around that person. OK, because they can say a couple of words and, you know, we all done it. Even me, we're in the flesh. OK, but you have to learn how to rule over your spirit. OK, you have to learn how to not be subjugated to certain words and stuff, you know, just because somebody can get under your skin. OK. So you have to be gentle, even when you're dealing with certain individuals, you know, a, a, a little trick that I like to use is I try not to talk over them or intervene. I let them get their point across. And when I respond, OK, and um, into the conversation that we're going on about, I normally respond in a very uh, in a very well mannered and, um, you know, a sincere type of uh, tone of voice. All right. As the scripture says really quickly. Let's grab, uh, what is it, uh, Proverbs, either Proverbs or Psalms. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1, it says, A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Okay? So, in order for you to put out a flame before that argument gets, you know, started in the heat of the moment, all right, uh, you can never... Keep somebody else in check, but you are in control of what you do and the things that come out of your mouth. So to the brothers, if you're out there teaching and you're out there, you know, combating and, and defending the gospel, just be very mindful when you're dealing with, you know, spirits that come up and they're already in a hasty mood. OK, don't match energy from energy. OK, don't match energy from energy. You are a son of God. OK. You have the light. You have the wisdom. Use it. OK, be circumspect on how you deal with people. OK, the scriptures tells us not to do anything that's going to uh, have the ministry blame. Let me see if I can find that. Yeah. Second Corinthians, chapter six, verse three, it says, giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. Because how, what are some ways the ministry can be blamed? All right. Give me an example. You know, you have certain Israelite camps out there like Sakari uh, and uh, GOCC where they put up videos of them being armed with weapons. OK, that that is causing the ministry to be blamed because the scriptures tells you not to trust in thy sword. OK, which the modern day sword is a gun. All right. 
Another way the ministry can be blamed is if you're out there on the highways and byways and you're preaching the gospel, but then again, you turn around, meet somebody comes up to the camp, starts to go back and forth with you, gets under your skin, and then you start to lose your character. You start to get out of control and then you don't know. They may have some goons or whatever that's recording you from a distance and you don't even know it. And then what they do is they'll manipulate that video and put it all up on the internet. Okay. And now you've brought shame to the ministry and to the brotherhood because you didn't keep your spirit in check. All right. So you have to be circumspect and when dealing with individuals, man. Right. So let's go back. Okay. Second Timothy chapter two. All right. Verse 25, it says in meekness and in instructing those that oppose themselves, if the most high per eventual will give them repentance to to the acknowledging of the truth. OK, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Let's read that in the NLT. It says gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Right. So. You return the answer, as we read in Proverbs, the 15th chapter, don't give an uh, 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 anger, uh, you know, don't respond matching energy for energy. Start off by giving a soft answer. OK, gently instruct those that oppose the truth. Perhaps the most high will change those people's hearts and they will learn the truth. And this is first and foremost talking about you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. This truth is not for everyone. All right. This is talking about the Israelites, the one that's starting with the elect that we're trying to, you know, bid back to the marriage. It says, then they will come to their senses and escape from the devil's trap for they have been held captive by him to do whatever he wants. OK, so we got to be mindful. All right. Of uh, how we're, you know, preaching this gospel and how we hold ourselves out there on the highways and byways, because you're also being tested, you know, at the same time. First Timothy chapter four, verse seven, it says, but refuse profane and old wife fables and exercise themselves rather unto godliness. All right. NLT says, do not waste time arguing over godless ideas and old wives tales. OK, an example of a godless idea is one of the many doctrines we have to keep refuting. And denoting time and time again is the doctrine of fallen angels coming down because they were disobedient to the Heavenly Father and then they slept with women on the planet Earth. That's what you call a godless idea in an old wives tale. That's nothing but a fable. OK, because the scriptures tells you that angels, number one, cannot have sex. And two, they are always in obedience with the Heavenly Father. If they were disobedient to the Heavenly Father, that would make the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, not omnipotent which means all powerful because then he will not have control over his own creation. OK, so that's an example of a godless idea. OK, you can't be a God not having the power to uh, turn away from godliness. OK, the angels. OK, because you have right hand angels and the left hand side of the angels. OK, but we're dealing with the right hand side of the angels. You have to have balance. OK, there's balance between good and evil. OK, so if he made good angels, they're not going to go outside of what they were created for. OK, and this is just common sense, but, uh, you know, common sense ain't really that common nowadays when, when it comes to Jake. OK, so, you know, through the spirit, you know, I just wanted this to um, hit home. But um, let's go to the Apocrypha. Let's go to Sirach chapter eight and um, uh, verse 16. Now. This, you know, may not relate to uh, the topic at hand with dealing with, uh, you know, arguments and stuff like that. But um, this can also can be used for wisdom just in case if you get into it with a person that's angry just because, you know, um, it says strive not with the an angry man and go not with him into a solitary place for blood is as nothing in his sight and where there is no help, he will overthrow thee. All right. Now, a good example of this is about a month or two ago, there was a um, there was a, some issues with the IUIC count <clears throat> when they went out to uh, Geno Jenkins uh, church and they met. They tried to meet with Geno Jenkins outside his church and um, they marched around. I believe it was said that they marched around the church until finally a few deacons and, you know, member boards actually came out from the panel 
to meet with the IUIC group. And long story short, there was an actual person that got so heated in the moment um, because he was sick of them, uh, you know, questioning Christianity that he actually pulled the gun on them. OK. And what the uh, what the men did was they packed up camp and then they left. All right. So you have to know when to be diligent and when to, you know, say things and how to, you know, sense yourself, because the scriptures tells us also, too, which Apostle Tahar went into this dealing with that uh, particular IUIC camp that went out there. They went out there like two or three times. But the scriptures tells you that when you go into a town, if they receive you not, not you're supposed to kick off the dust off your shoes. All right. And, and leave the next town. That's what you, that's what they should have done. And it's the same thing. You know, don't don't sit there and go back and forth with an individual. OK. It's not worth it, man. Titus chapter three, verse 10, one of my favorite precepts. All right. We'll start at verse nine. It says, but avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable in vain. Now, the the pretext here was back then you had a lot of people from the Levitical priesthood that were trying to come up, you know, and um, sustain their part within the uh, temple. And they used to have records that they would track back then. And it caused a big uproar um, because that's what they relied upon. So this is really what this is talking about when you go into the history. Um, but it says in verse 10, it says a man that is a heretic. OK, which Timothy was speaking about. All right. Dealing with uh, Hamanaeus and uh, his disciple Politus, because they were contrary to the sound doctrine that Apostle Paul was teaching. OK, they were they were uh, pretty much a heretic. It says a man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject. OK, admonition, meaning warning, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth being condemned of himself. So you ain't got to worry about trying to go back and forth for the individual. All right. There's a brother on TikTok that's very diligent in the work and showing great patience to an individual. I've been noticing within the last 24 to 48 hours that he's been uh, going back and forth, you know, with this guy and being, you know, patient and apt to teach. But I even had to step in to interject, you know, and tell the, you know, it's not don't even deal with him no more. All right. You've done several videos going around in circles with the same individual. Obviously, their conscience is sealed with a hot iron, seared, Salakia, forgive me. OK, and we have to understand that people like that. OK, nothing's going to come out of it. Right. Let's let's get the book of Amos and we'll close out on this last precept. Amos chapter three and verse three, it says, can two walk together except they be agreed? Right. NLT version. Can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction. OK, most likely not. OK, so if the two of you cannot agree. All right. The only thing that you have left is agree to disagree by just walking away. OK, you obviously believe in one thing. We believe wholeheartedly in this thing. So we don't have anything. We're not going to we don't have a conversation with you. We don't have anything to dialogue on. There's no reason for us to uh, have any sort of discourse with you at this point. OK, so at the end of the day, brothers, we got to learn how to be circumspect and catch ourselves and rule of our spirits where we're dealing, you know, with all these type of, you know, people out here, demons, spirits and everything else like that. All right. Stick to the script. All right. If people are coming up to the camp. OK, and they're not being sincere with where they're really trying to learn, because there's a difference when you ask a question and you're trying to learn versus when you're out there trying to, de you know, deceive someone and being, you know, rigorously aggressive and saying, what about this and this and John the Baptist did this. And he said that whosoever loveth his son or, you know, whosoever believe or call upon him, you know, John 316 and yada, yada, yada. There's a you can tell by somebody's spirit whether they're trying to, you know, be aggressive with you versus if they're asking a sincere question because they're really out to learn. OK, so we have to do a better job of walking in the spirit to decipher that and to have a discernment. All right. So with that, I like to give all praise, glory and honor to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying until the next time. Shalom.